Hi, Sheila and all ISTF conference participants. I am Rowena Suryaga from the Asia-Pacific region based in the Philippines. On the question of what are the top issues in forest restoration faced in our region, I'd like to share what I learned from a series of five online sessions organized last year by the Philippine Watershed Management Coalition, where I am a member. From what watershed alliances in the country are saying, governance is the most challenging issue in forest and landscape restoration. This results in concerns about mismatch and metrics. At the conceptual level, the approach to addressing land degradation has broadened, yes. Emphasis has shifted to landscape approaches that attempt to break down silos and go beyond conventional sectoral boundaries. However, while some progress has been made at the policy level, this is not nearly enough to neutralize the widespread and rapid rate of degradation of forests and agricultural lands. At the implementation level, mindsets have not yet really shifted, and so the field approaches largely remain the same. Same species, same incentive arrangements, same gatekeepers. My home institution, Environmental Science for Social Change, assessed land cover change in Bukidnon, a province in Mindanao, around two years ago. We found that other tree cover, meaning wooded land that are not natural forests, and this include monoculture tree plantations and agroforests, expanded by 26% over 13 years. These gains were mainly from fast-growing species such as falcata, gemelina, and fruit trees. These species may have provided livelihood benefits. However, they do not deliver the same level of ecosystem services as that of natural forests. And so landscape scale restoration remains a major challenge. Huge questions are arising about forest quality and the contribution of these accomplishments to restoring degraded landscapes. There is concern that overall forest quality is declining, thus diminishing the capacity of forests to provide essential ecosystem services. Sadly, assisted natural gen regeneration as an approach to restoring degraded landscapes has not yet really caught on in the field. In terms of metrics at the conceptual level, reforestation objectives have broadened to include watershed protection, food security, livelihood improvement, biodiversity conservation, even carbon sequestration compared to before the prior narrow aim of increasing just forestry's contribution to GDP. The National Greening Program invested nearly $1 billion over 10 years. The Philippines has met its target of planting 1.5 billion trees on 1.5 million hectares, contributing almost 10% of the region's pledge to the bond challenge. However, there is a need to also broaden metrics, incentive systems, and safety nets for concerns. Uh, a socioeconomic evaluation found that harvesting incentives are not clearly indicated in contracts with the local people. Support to forest protection represents only a tiny fraction of the budget. Of NGP's $140 million budget, only 7% goes to forest protection. Very little is allocated to helping the trees grow after planting. Only $120 per hectare over three years is allocated for maintenance costs. Program participants are expected to cover for forest protection and maintenance costs after three years. If a typhoon hits, like what happened last December, post-disaster national assessments look at only immediate needs and estimate socioeconomic impacts. Losses sustained in these reforestation sites and the long ter longer term damages are not taken into account. Tree planting is not included in the coverage of existing crop insurance programs. 
the national greening program is planned to run until 2028. So there is some hope. Also, being stuck at home due to COVID has increased our desire to reconnect with nature and simplify our lifestyles. My hope is that this will translate to changes in mindset and behavior that will enable us to reach our sustainable development goals. Thank you.